I've decided to compile some comments and references that, for the sake of this series, I'll be referring to as the Reddit Collection. My name's Kyle, and I should probably distance myself from this material, informing people that I'm not responsible for any of the things I'm gonna cover, but honestly, if you think I'm capable of all of the things I'm about to spew, then I admire you. Without further ado, let's proceed, in no particular order. Number 10. Post-it note story. User rbradberry1920 makes a post on our legal advice entitled, Post-it Notes Left in Apartment. On the 15th of April, I found a yellow post-it note in a handwriting that wasn't mine on my desk reminding me of some errands I had to do, but told literally nobody about. While odd, I chalked it up to something I did in my sleep, thinking maybe in my half-awake state I scrawled it so it didn't appear to be my handwriting. I threw it out and thought little of it. On the 19th, I found another post-it note on the back of my desk chair, in the same handwriting as the previous note, telling me to make sure I saved my documents. I was freaked out, but there were no other signs of a break-in, so I set up a webcam in my house, aimed at my desk, and used a security cam app for it to record after detecting movement. On the 28th, I woke up to find another post-it note, this one saying, Our landlord isn't letting me talk to you but it's important we do. I immediately checked the webcams folder on my computer and found nothing from the night before, but my computer's recycling bin had been emptied, which I am certain I did not do recently, indicating someone had noticed the webcam and deleted the files. They were just saved straight to a folder on my desktop called webcam. Smart. Today, on the 1st of May, I found another post-it note, this time on the outside of my door, with nothing written on it, and there also appears to be post-its on many other doors in my apartment complex, all blank and varying colors. Do I have any legal recourse here? I have no proof except for the post-its, but those are written by my pen and on my post-its, so conceivably I could have faked them. Would contacting the police get me into any trouble if they can't determine an outside source for this? I just want to make sure I'm not wasting anyone's time. Should I consult my landlord, uh, others in the complex? This concludes our Bradbury's initial post. The top comment from user Kakerlack reads as follows. You seem sincere, and this doesn't appear to be the plot of a Ray Bradbury short story. It's possible that your landlord is leaving notes inside your apartment but they don't make any sense in the context you're describing them. It's likely that you're writing the notes yourself, but you're forgetting. Do you use post-it notes as reminders in any other parts of your life or job? Yes, this might be a mental health issue. You might be experiencing some sort of disassociative disorder, or it might be a physical problem. You mentioned that you have a very unusual narrow bedroom with no windows. Is there a chance that you are not getting enough ventilation when you sleep? Or that there is a carbon monoxide leak in the building? A cheap CO detector, which you should have anyway, is a fast way to find out. You'll also have really bad headaches. You know your own medical and mental history and your other experiences. If you think these incidents might be you writing notes to yourself, there's no shame in getting someone qualified to give you an opinion. Our Bradbury 1920 promptly responds, I have had really bad headaches, and I actually already do have a CO detector. Guess I should probably take it out of its box and plug it in. In a follow-up post to our legal advice, user rbradbury1920 issues a thanks to everyone who sent suggestions and gave advice on how to proceed, especially to those who recommended a CO detector. Because when he plugged it in, it read 100 ppm, and you can just assume from context that that's fucking bad. Too long didn't read here, he had CO poisoning and thought his landlord was stalking him, but in reality, a Reddit commenter saved someone's life, and it wouldn't be the first time. Number 11. Fart Kid. In an Ask Reddit thread entitled, Reddit, What Was Your Silent Unseen Act of Personal Defiance? Ruby Rod responds, If I decide to stare, it's usually with a, yeah, what the fuck are you gonna do about it type of look. 
I'm about 6'7", so even when I'm just trying to be friendly, i.e. not farting on a stranger's kid's head, and meeting a family member or friend's kid for the first time, I've noticed they get very hide between their mother's legs intimidated on sight if I'm not sitting down. So it's not hard for me to silence slash intimidate a child, especially when I'm trying to. However, a few times I've been called out. One time I was pretty drunk with a friend at a Target buying Risk. And no, we never finished playing the whole game. This little Mexican 5-7 to seven year old with a mohawk was being an insufferable little shit in the action figure section. I heard him from like 5 aisles over and it was like nails on a chalkboard. I tell my friend, I'm gonna fart on this kid's head. Watch and learn. I saunter on over to the aisle in question and see the vile little prick calling his mom an idiot for not buying him a huge fucking G.I. Joe the movie vehicle, which pissed me off even more considering how awful the movie was. Buy some good toys. I already bought that one for you and you broke it by throwing it down the stairs. Shut up! I need it! It's the only one I do have now! The mother was younger than me. I'm in my mid-twenties, and gave a defeated look. I, I don't have enough money right now. You are an idiot! And continued to just berate and publicly shame this woman. At the time, I was on a strict Chipotle carnitas burrito diet. And while I was watching all this, my stomach gave me an initial warning gurgle. Very courteous stomach, telling me I was about an hour away from punishing the toilet. Serendipity. Destiny. I inch a bit closer to my prey, inspecting some wrestling toys and pondering the weird homoeroticness of the whole sport in general. The kid shouts, Fuck you! I hate you! The mom rolls her eyes and turns her back to the kid to ignore him, and could you believe it, the kid gets on his hands and knees and starts taking the toy out of the box. It's go time, motherfucker. I position my back towards him and at this point I'm like two feet away from him. His head is down, getting frustrated with those goddamn twisty tie things and I go for the kill. I bend down to reach for one of the toys on the lower shelf. At this point my ass is inches away from this kid's head. Now, generally speaking, the best way to go about this is to act casual, drop your belly bomb, then walk away after a few seconds like nothing is out of the ordinary. I usually go one aisle over and listen to the kid's reaction in delight. However, today I couldn't help myself. I have my head tilted back looking at the kid out of the corner of my eye to ensure accuracy. I'm so close that from a distance, it looks like I'm about to sit on him. My friend sees this happening and can no longer contain himself. He's covering his mouth, but his hee Ha hyperventilating donkey chortle is fairly audible over the 90s pop music playing on the loudspeakers. The kid immediately looks up towards the laughter, but can't help but notice there is an ass now directly in his face. Now, I'm trying not to laugh, but also panicking as I just made eye contact with him. He furls his brow and I look over in the mother's direction still back toward us. I relish in the moment and look on this child's confused and naive face. The initial blast was mighty and boisterous. I swear I saw his hair blowing in the wind, so to speak. If I wasn't wearing jeans, I think I could have blown over an empty soda can. I would call it a very fun fart, A++, would buy again. However, what immediately followed that out of the chamber was truly horrifying. The fart's implication changed without notice and swiftly. It went from a joyous dry air horn squeal to a nefarious hissing mephitis. I think the little moppet noticed the hateful metamorphosis before even I did because he wretched his neck violently trying to get away from the personified evil being fumigated into his soul. Because of his position, hovering over the toy hand and knee, it was all in vain. The only way out was forward, and forward would mean certain death. I had positioned myself well on the higher ground, free to escape or relent at any time. And him, poor and immobilized, biding his time until the cruel attack was over. Obviously, this child needed to reread Sun Tzu. 
In total, it lasted about four seconds, but for that kid, it must have seemed like time was frozen. The long-term severe brain damage which he no doubt suffered only added to that effect. When I finished with my beardness, i.e. forcing a little boy to huff my farts, there was a silent, pregnant pause. This kid was clearly shocked and stunned. No one had ever stood up to this dwarf sociopath in his whole life. I had taken the words out of his mouth and filled it with fart. I make my move first, picking up the toy I was reaching for on the low shelf, take a few steps forward and stare at it for a few seconds. On to Alligator. The only thing the kid could manage to do was burst into tears. My friend senses danger. The jig is up, and his head darts for cover. The mom turned around to see her kid with an open toy crying on the floor, and me minding my own business. She walks up to him and asks what's wrong, but the kid can't speak. All he gets out is, It took every fiber of my body not to laugh. I put the toy back on a middle shelf, turned around giving a final nonchalant look-see, and then begin to take my exit. Sensing that his assailant was getting away scot-free, he somehow managed to compose himself for a moment. He shouts, He farted on me! I could feel him pointing at me, but I continued to act like I was just browsing. I was almost around the corner when the mom goes, Excuse me, sir, sir, sir! I turn around nonplussed. Uh, who, me? while pointing to myself. Yes, did, did you fart on my son? Weighing my options, uh, I played dumb. W what I, I mean, I did fart. On my son? Well, I mean, technically speaking, I, I mean, what is on? <laughs> why did you, why did you fart on my son? At this point, the little kid has the look of schadenfreude on his face, happy to see me in trouble. Fuck you. I'm a man. I will fart on you if I please. I turned my attention to the little kid and stare at him. Because the whole store could hear him being a little rotten asshole to his mother. So I thought I'd come over here and treat him like one. The mom looks at me, her son and the scattered G.I. Joe rapper's box on the floor. The mom is puzzled as to what to do and says, Just, just go. That's my cue. I turn around and walk away with a little extra step. I look up to see the black orb of security cameras and all the stories on Reddit about unjustly having to register as a sex offender flash before my eyes. As soon as I turn the corner, I book it outside as fast as I can while dialing my friend. Like a true friend, he is right out front with the engine running and risk in the trunk. We laugh on the car ride back the whole scene. With a slight hint of seriousness in his voice, he asks, Do you do that a lot? Uh, not that much. Like once every six months or so. We both knew I was lying. We go to our other friend's house, play Risk until four in the morning while drinking scotch. Overall, I would say it was a pretty, pretty good day. Oh, subscribers, you can't get enough of this shit, can you? <laughs>